We are out at Beale Air Force Base today, checking out some historical mines. Uh, unfortunately, I was an idiot and forgot the stabilizer in the truck, so I'm going to do the best I can just holding this in my hand. And we're out checking three historical mine shafts right at the site. We've arrived at the first one, and you can see my buddy investigating it down there. We'll go check that out further in a moment. These were obviously load mines. You can see all the quartz on the ground down here. Uh, the sun's just coming out. We started this hike early because it's going to be scorching hot today. Um, as you can see it more easily here. Lots of quartz. And then there's uh, this, this waste rock pile here that I'm walking out on. Extends out that way for a way. And uh, there's a strange depression over here that's also full of uh, quartz. It's all quartz waste rock. It's interesting that they were rejecting this, this uh, quartz here, because it looks pretty mineralized to me. Um, so they must have been getting something pretty good underground to reject this. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, somebody were to process this now using modern technology that they couldn't do uh, too badly with the uh, mineralization I'm seeing here. So, Beale Air Force Base, uh, let's see a little bit of history. It used to encompass an area much wider than where we're standing now. It used to be called Camp Beale, and uh, it used to extend out to those hills you see in the distance. And then uh, after World War II, it became Beale Air Force Base and uh, shrunk down a bit. And so you've got uh, Spencerville Wildlife Refuge out there right now, uh, which actually still has a lot of World War II history out there, old bunkers and that kind of thing, which is uh, kind of interesting. But uh, we're here for the mines today, so we'll go down and uh, check out this first mine shaft. So this is looking down into the first shaft here, and as you can see it's flooded, unfortunately. It's, it's open, but it's flooded. Uh, which is unfortunate because uh, it would be pretty neat to get down there. It's kind of interesting it's flooded. Uh, we didn't expect that, especially because we're up on a hill. Uh, and we're sort of very dry here. Um, so it's sort of like you got this oasis in the desert here. I know it's not a desert, but you know, it sort of has that feel to it. This uh, desert of grassland around us. Something that's interesting is... Um, Local animals obviously know about this because you can see all these game trails running down there, for example, there, and then uh, you see all the flattened grass right here. We didn't create that. Some animal was bedding down here. Um, so obviously the local animals know about this as a watering hole and uh, crews down here to have a drink. So that's kind of cool. So we'll, uh, we'll head up higher on the hill and uh, check out those other sites for you. All right, we've made it up to the uh, second shaft here. The first one is down there. I'm at, I can't really see. With the glare of the screen, I can't see too clearly, but it's down there. I'm sure you guys can see it better on whichever screen you're watching this on. I'm standing on the second waste rock pile. Same, de same deal here with lots of quartz uh, and the waste rock. Bigger pile here. There's more going on here. Uh, my buddy over there for conveniently providing a sense of scale. Now it's kind of interesting here, we haven't really made sense of this yet. Uh, there's a large hole he's checking out, large hole there, and a slightly small, smaller hole there. And um, they're all filled in, and we can't figure out where exactly the shaft was. With a pile I'm standing on, you would think it might be there, but that doesn't really look like much. And you've got these, uh, there's a finger of waste rock headed out that way as well. So we don't know if somebody worked the waste rock, was digging around the waste rock, they're going to reprocess it or what the deal was, but we haven't found anything open here yet. I'm just trying to uh, poke around him more and 
see if there's anything at the bottom of these holes, but so far I haven't come up with anything. And then the other sites, uh, you can just see off in the distance, there's one on the top of the hill there, and there's something over there too. So those, from here, those look like the most promising sites yet. Still looking around that second site now. I just wanted to show you some of the uh, the mineralized quartz here because uh, you can see the iron staining on it. I mean, it's got everything you would want to see if you're looking for uh, load. I mean, L O D E load, uh, a load gold operation. Big chunks of quartz here. It looks good. It looks like good rock to me. Looking at it more here, uh, I was speculating that perhaps that main pile that I was out on right there is, you know, where there was a legitimate large shaft and these smaller holes in the ground and piles may have just been little prospects if the, uh, the vein ran along the surface. So that's a possibility as well. We're still hiking up to those interesting features on the top there, but along the way, we've been passing an endless string of uh, these holes and divots, pockets in the ground, whatever you want to call them. Uh, see the next one there, and it's all the way down. And yeah, he was just saying, if you didn't hear that, the hill over here is just covered in lumps and diggings and that sort of thing. And we noticed in the side of this hole here that uh, the host rock is quartz. And so our assumption, of course, is that they were just following a surface quartz vein all the way down the hill. And uh, everywhere I brushed against the surface, they would dig out these little pits to see what was there. And then the, in those places where the vein ran deeper, that's where they had put the shafts down there and over there. And then, uh, of course, we're curious about what they found up top here. What those interesting looking features are. All right, we're getting up near the top and uh, you see, well, I got a closer look. That's a huge quartz outcropping right there. There's uh, a section here where they drop down. It's all lined with quartz. The light's terrible right now. It's all lined with quartz here. So obviously they ran down there. Uh, there's Air Force Base. In the background there. Okay, we have come up to this quartz outcropping and uh, I asked my buddy to stand there just so you could see how big it was. And this is solid quartz, my dear viewers. This is solid quartz through and through. So uh, no surprise, this attracted the interest of the old timers. See, even got that iron, still that iron staining. Kind of hard to tell in the bad light. Maybe you can see here. All that rusty iron color. They uh, obviously somebody picked away at this right here. Uh, and they must have gotten something good out of it for them to do this much work here. That is pretty impressive. And it runs, I can see it runs all the way up the hill there. You see the remains of a building up on top there. We'll go check out. But this quartz vein is fat and thick and like I said, it runs all the way up. Uh, you see the Sutter Buttes off in the distance there. Here's the Air Force Base. And, uh, this pave pause right there, actually. Probably getting dosed with microwave, uh, radiation right now, but whatever. We're far enough away, it should be fine. I've taken tours of that site, though. They say that when the birds fly, uh, Near the front of the radar array there, they just get cooked. Literally cooked. Okay, that, uh, that thick, fat quartz vein is right there. You can see pave paws right there. Uh, this is where at least one of the upper shafts was. Kind of hard to tell, but that right there, or where my shadow is pointing, that is a huge tangle of barbed wire that was intended to uh, keep us away from here. Um, yeah, I'm not kidding, that's a no joke, really thick tangle of barbed wire and cement or concrete 
post. I mean, they really didn't want anybody going down here. So, I don't see any need for us to uh, push that since it's obviously a road to shut, but there could just be a thin little plug there. So, I'll leave that alone. Um, waste rock pile. This is full of iron rich quartz. You can see all through here. Um, I noticed a, a good little stack of it just down here. As you can see. Now, uh, I know gold guys well enough to know that they, they would just be going nuts if they came across something like this. They'd want to crush it up. Um, and I would imagine that the only reason all this stuff is still here and hasn't been worked is because of the, uh, the Air Force Base, you know? Because otherwise, I just know that somebody would have been crushing this up to work through it because this just looks like exactly, exactly what you want. It's, uh, there was a lot of training that took place here during World War II. I mean, there were guys doing all kinds of live fire exercises out here, running around tanks. Uh, and so it's, it's difficult to know how they might have altered the landscape, you know, for safety or just for, you know, explosions and running heavy equipment like tanks and stuff over this. Um, so I'd be curious to know, you know, maybe there are more structures here in the past that got shot up or blown up or something, who knows. But uh, speaking of structures, we'll go take a look at the uh, concrete foundations up here and see if we can determine their use. All right, I was just uh, filming from over there a moment ago. And you see a concrete foundation here in front of me. Uh, it looks too small to have hosted a uh, hoist. So maybe there was a compressor here or um, who knows what. But there's so much quartz here. Look. They just put this, they slap this right on top of the quartz vein. That's part of the quartz vein. That's not just sitting on the surface, that rock is actually the vein right there. So, uh, that's interesting. There's some more stuff up there. I'll go check out now. All right, there's that quartz vein right there, and it's just running right up between us here. Concrete foundation there. Obviously, there was something on top of that. I'm guessing a boiler. Given the shape of it, that would be my guess. It's more uh, concrete foundation here behind me. I just don't have enough to be able to predict what that might have been, or what might have been there, I should say. Uh, that obviously does not date. Back to the time of the mine, that's modern, whatever that is. The quartz vein keeps running this way, as you can see. And they actually cut underneath it right there. Uh, I'll take a closer look at that. Here's that section where they ran underneath the vein there. And then the vein keeps going here. Down to where my buddy is there. And then wraps around. It just uh, it outcrops all along here. Which is pretty phenomenal. And then, uh, as I was saying, then it wraps bends around down the hill there toward uh, the base and pave paws. I was shooting from up there earlier and uh, come down to where I mentioned the vein extended. All solid quartz here. I'm standing on solid quartz, but then look how wide the vein gets here. It extends all the way over here. And uh, my buddy there just so you can get a sense of uh, size here and he's standing on quartz as well and then we noticed it looks like there's some stuff over there on that hill there that uh, could have been mined as well okay we've been cruising down the sill here um, quartz outcropping up there and it's hard to tell we've been this is quartz running all the way down the hill here uh, and you can see some peeking out of the grass right there, but we've just been walking on this quartz vein running all the way down here. And right in front of me here, you can see they carved a pocket out. See the quartz down there, carved a pocket out, a pile right there. And down there, a little way in the distance, 
it looks like a very obvious at it. And then my friend pointed out on the way down, you can't see it from here, but up on top there, uh, we can see a fence, a small fence going around what we presume is a shaft, given all the quartz on the hill there. So we're gonna go down and check out what we think is an adit here, and then we're gonna hike up the hill there. All right, we're down at that adit. Uh, that's my friend up on the waste rock pile there, of course. And uh, he spotted uh, this old strapping here. This is the uh, metal strips or straps that they would put on top of the, uh, the boards to serve as low budget rail. So uh, that kind of dates this mine as being well, we already knew it was pretty old, that just sort of confirms that it's quite old. Um, but also confirms 100% that this was indeed an adit. And uh, I can see the waste rock extending out that way. We were just uh, sort of around the side there where that waste rock pile was. You can see a pay of pile in the distance for your uh, sense of perspective. See how green it is here? Well, there's a reason for that. And that is because of this adit right here. And you can see that it runs back there. And it goes as far as we can see. It can't be that big. Because uh, I wish our problem was not huge, but it does run back there. We uh, did not expect this at all and don't want to trash our boots, so uh, i got to give my buddy Jake credit. He's joining the Barefoot Club. So far, I'm the only one I know of that's been willing to go into these things barefoot, but now, now I've got company, so that is, is nice. Um, it's probably not going to be fun squeezing in the portal here, but I'll, uh, I'll pick up somewhere down there. That whole time I was chatting away, uh, there's a giant active hornet's nest right there that's a big one and uh my stuff is right here and i was just chilling the whole time underneath that big hornet's nest and when the sun hits that they're gonna wake up and get much more active so oh the joys of mine exploring all right we are creeping into this at it and uh don't have the waders on and so uh I'll be talking in a high-pitched voice for the first section here before I get to the water because this is chilly. Um, old school at it here. You can see it's small and tight, but it's all solid quartz here. Uh, and it runs as far back as I can see, which is much farther than I expected. So maybe it intersects a shaft or something. We're not sure. But we'll find out. Yeah, well, this is definitely way steep. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you know what? That walk back, we're gonna be fucking sweating. It's gonna burn all off. Probably. Yeah, I yeah, I think you're right, man. I think you're right. I am on piece of metal. Are you? Or, uh, probably that strapping. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't feel that. I have to say, it's pretty solid. There's not ground fall or anything like that in here. This is all solid rock, which yeah. is nice. Um, I'm surprised. Is it still clear? Can you see if there's any windses? I don't, yeah, absolutely. There's nothing like that. Oh, I see, actually, you see, uh, I don't know if that's, I hope that's coming across the camera. There's pipe or rail down there. You guys probably can't see that at all. I think that's part of the rail down there, though. That's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, that still goes as far as I can see. Yeah, that's rail. I'm stepping on. You see, can you see that, Jake? I see it right in front of you, yeah. Yeah, right there. Sorry, the water so Real Rail rail or strap rail? Uh, let me feel with my foot. It feels like strap rail. There's a, a rock right here where I am now. You're gonna wanna step over. I'm up on it right now. You don't wanna stub your toe on that. That really hurts. That's on the right. I'm standing on it right now. Oh, okay. See it. Okay, yeah, I can clearly see both the rails beneath me now. Sort of see that in the water right there. 
So this is decent size if they uh, even have the rail. Coming out of the water a little bit now. Now it's like thigh deep rather than testicle deep. Nice sandy bottom, which uh, I think both of us appreciate. Yeah, it's been pretty clear. Even when I'm walking on it? Yeah. Cool. I keep trying to show you some of the rails, but uh, I'm disturbing the water too much. I just can't believe how far back this runs. You can see the sides here. You can see how mineralized it is. <laughs> I keep thinking about that hornet's nest outside, man. <laughs> it was waiting for us. It looks like it might take a bend or something up there. Hard to say. There's some quartz in the wall here. you see it all? Uh, keep stumbling over. Oh yeah, he's, he's absolutely right on the left here. It's, uh, it's, it's thick with quartz. Yeah, you're right, man. I'm so busy looking ahead and looking for obstacles. It's on the right side too, all back here on the left. Huh. Well, I guess it's good that I'm looking for winzes and things like that. Yeah, you but find that up on the, yeah, on the walls. You point out the interesting stuff on the side. I'll keep an eye out for the uh, hazards ahead of us. Fairly warm in here. Yeah, I'm getting used to the water now. I have to say, I'm not. It's not like the High Sierra frozen uh, or semi-frozen water. This will definitely perk you up a bit early in the morning, but uh, it's not terrible to say. back there or what? Open it up a little bit back here. You see it's wider now. And uh, I can't tell I think those are pick marks. See where somebody has been working on that in the mud right there? It's like fingers. Thing. Yeah. Like they're, yeah, it's like finger marks right there. Somebody's trying to pull something out of there. But that was a long time ago. It's all quartz along here. Actually, most of this is probably quartz. It's just got mud and stuff on it, so it doesn't immediately stand out as quartz. Uh, that looks like a cow hoof floating right there. <laughs> sure there's gonna be an interesting story behind that one. Oh yeah, it's a little quartz along here. Getting a little bit shallower, just above my knees now. Looks like a face right there. Might just face out back there, but one must be sure about these things. Thick with quartz back here. Get all the finger marks on the wall. Oh, there's more over there too. Yeah, just cover it. Oh yeah, you're right. I see they're trying to clear the quartz. Huh? Yeah, they're trying to clean the quartz off or something. Yeah. It's not easy. No. They didn't succeed either, so don't feel bad. Yeah, this is all quartz through here. And then this, look at this. Wow. That's uh, solid quartz. That's not too mineralized though, so that may be barren. Oh, speaking of the fingers, look at that. I don't know what even they're trying to accomplish with that. Okay, people. Yeah. 
Mine's that chip tick on my pants too. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm soaked all the way through, so it would have been more sensible, but oh well. It's a hot hike out, so. Oh look. What does that say? C A I N I M Came. I don't know. I bet that's been there a while though. Came must have had very dirty hands by the time he came out of here. Except for these rocks here. Of course they're sharp. Actually, you know what? That just faces up. Oh, man. Are you sure? Yeah, man. I just gotta check. Already wet. Can't get any rocks. Nah, I just didn't want to go over these sharp rocks, but whatever. <laughs> they're just feet. I'll tough it up. Just showing you all the cords and such back here. See, I think it faces out right there, but he he could be right. Jake could be right. It looks like it might be something off the right a little bit. I always have to check. I always have to check. There's more fingers in the wall, but I can't. It looks like writing down there, but I can't make out. This is new. New-ish or new? New-ish. It's a, you know, two names and a heart. Can't read them, but... Huh. I can't read this. There's writing over here, too. I can't read that. Unless I mud graffiti. That's what this all is. Oh, this says 1960... Oh, wow. 1960 something. I don't know. I mean, if you think about it, there's nothing to disturb the mud back here. So, oh yeah, okay, that is the end right there. That's it. Okay, there's more back here too. This is dry a couple months from now. I don't know, but the thing is, like, if, this isn't up in the snow country, so it's not like this would, you know, get full up of water in the winter or anything. This would, uh, you know, if we scratch our names in here, uh, I'm sure it would last a long time. Because they say there's nothing to stir it. So if you can write 1960 something in the mud and have it still be there, that tells you something. Well, a piece of wood back here, good echo, but that's it. I guess this didn't assay out too well. Yeah, we gotta go find the shaft. Yeah. Just looking back where we came in. It's pretty good distance. We are just on the other side of the hill over there and uh, have come up the hill here. My buddy walking out on the pretty large waste rock pile right there, actually. And behind us here is what I believe is a inclined shaft. So this is where we think the inclined shaft was. Um, flooded, of course, and the cows have discovered it too, so it's pretty muddy. It's too muddy to see anything in. The water is just a very dark brown, but uh, yes, there's the ground level there. And so we, where we're standing on now is inclined, so we assume, you know, just keeps running down like that. It's an inclined shaft. And then they just brought the waste rock out behind us here and uh, dumped it there. It's the top of the pile right there. We have a history book with us here that talks about the area where we're exploring today. And um, it specifically mentions uh, the shaft that we see in front of us here plunging down there. It's plugged probably 40 feet down or so. The one we saw before is uh, just over the hill there. And then the first series of three shafts that we checked out is on that far hill over there. Now the author mentions a specific incident regarding this shaft in front of us right here. I thought I would read to you. And she says, Trying to get out of the wind here. She says, uh, Abandoned mine shafts are still a hazard at Beale. There are at least three open, unmarked shafts on the hill above Pave Paws. One of them was the scene of an accident during Camp Beale days. On May 12, 1943, Sergeant Clift, while on nighttime maneuvers with his unit, 
fell into an abandoned mine shaft 40 feet deep and filled with water. His friend Sergeant Harris scrambled into the shaft to rescue him, but found the rock walls too slippery to climb. The squad made a pile of their undershirts and set fire to them for light. They tied their fatigues together to form a rope, but when they tried to pull Sergeant Clift up, the rope broke. Next, they found a log 35, 35 feet long with a crotch in it. They lowered it, and Clift was able to sit in the crotch while the log was raised. Harris climbed the log to safety. Now, we were wondering how you raise a 35-foot log with a man on it, but uh, I guess maybe if you had enough guys, you could do it. But uh, one does wonder. That, that would have taken a lot of work. So it's kind of cool to get a specific story like that in relation to something that we're seeing now. That was uh, 1943, so that was, that was a good long while ago.